Hey guys, welcome to Collider Video for our very special Ant-Man review. I'm joined, of course, by Mr. Mark Ellis. Both of us have had a chance to see Ant-Man. We thought we'd break down our thoughts. Now, this is not our spoilers review, so you're totally safe to watch this review. We will get to our spoilers review once the film opens. But let's talk a little bit of Ant-Man. Mark, what were your expectations going to like with all the drama we saw? With Ant-Man, with the Edgar Wright situation, and is Ant-Man a popular enough character? And there was a lot of big question marks. Peyton Reed being the director, what was your expectations going? What do you? What were you thinking you were going to get? Well, once this movie started building some momentum with the trailers that I enjoyed, I was like, okay, I think that we're back on the right track. Because when Edgar Wright departed, I was very nervous about this. And then at Comic Con last year, it kind of felt like Peyton Reed did have a handle on this, and they were about to begin shooting. And Paul Rudd seemed really energetic and on board with what this story was. And my expectations going into the movie were I had no idea what to expect, which is rare when you're talking about a Marvel film. Because as much as I loved Avengers: yeah. Age of Ultron, it, I pretty much knew what was going to go down. And so I didn't know how ominous it would get or if anybody was going to die or stuff like that. But you know what you're getting with those guys. I wasn't familiar with Ant-Man, the comic book. I wasn't familiar with the superhero or the backstory. And so to see this origin story on screen and have it not feel like another run-of-the-mill origin story, to be so fresh and inventive and funny and action-packed, I was blown away with happiness. I was kind of the same thing. I was a little bit of, look, well, like everybody else in the world, there was trepidation mm -hmm. with all the you know, drama surrounding Edgar Wright leaving because everybody, like the un unified voice online was, this movie's a loss now because of the Edgar Wright departure. You know, we heard like guys like James Gunn saying, hey guys, look, it's just, it wasn't a fit, whatever. It seemed like things between Disney and Edgar were amicable and, and that's good, but still, it's one of those properties. What do you do with Ant-Man? I remember I had the same feeling, though, going into Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, really? They're making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie? <laughs> Me too. I was like, wait, there's a talking raccoon. That's going to be stupid. <laughs> yeah. Eggs on my face. And look how that kind of turned out. So I think, but the trailers look good. I was very excited by the casting of Paul Rudd. Um, so, and the trailers look good. So I, I, my expectations going in were optimistic. I was optimistic going in. So now let's talk about <laughs> Ant-Man. What are some of the things you thought worked about Ant-Man? What are some things you liked about Ant-Man? The sense of humor might be the funniest film that Marvel's ever done, which is a credit. It's not a detriment to the story at all. But again, you go in and it's called Ant-Man. It's like, wait, it's a, this guy and he hangs out with ants. They have a sense of humor about that, but that's not all they have. It doesn't just have to rely on jokes. The action in here is what surprised me the most because the only concern I had going in from the trailers was that him running around with ants is like, wait, is this, is this going to be like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Are you going to be just hanging out? with insects they're going to be pals they pull it off so well when he is tiny and he's this guy that can shrink and do all these creative things that you just can't do when you're a normal sized human that to me was really one of the selling points of this movie is that the action and comedy blended so well and when you have a Paul Rudd and a Michael Douglas going back and forth Michael Douglas one of my favorite actors of all time him being in this film lends every time Michael Douglas is on screen it grounds the film to some degree he's just that good of an anchor and it allows the imagination of the character to really take flight. It's funny, I was talking to Paul Rudd about the movie a, a few months ago. He said, yeah, said, what's it like working with Michael? He's just weird, man. I bring some jokes, and he brings the gravitas, the talent, mm -hmm. the credibility, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you nailed it with, this is one of the funniest films that, that Marvel has ever done. But like Captain America Winter Soldier, which was so unique in the Marvel world, because it really was like a political thriller, they gave Ant-Man such a unique thumbprint. This is unlike any Marvel film we've seen before. It's very, very, this is at its heart. This is a heist movie with comedy elements. Now, a lot of people, including myself, thought when they cast Paul Rudd and got Peyton Reed, a comedy guy, mm -hmm. we expected it's going to be yuck, yuck, joke, joke. But really, it's not. It's very funny, but it's definitely not a straight-up comedy. This is a heist movie, and they do it really, really well. Speaking of Michael Douglas and speaking of origin stories... What is really cool about Ant-Man is that it's not really an origin story because I'm a little bit bored of origin stories, to be honest with you. I like just getting into the action and going. And one of the things they did so great with this is that Hank Pym has been Ant-Man. <laughs> so Ant we don't see the right. origin of Ant-Man. We get to see kind of the passing of the baton. So it's it's kind of an origin story, but a little bit different in some way. And the way they execute it, I thought was done really, really well. 
Michael Douglas himself, he, Paul Rudd was right. He brings the gravitas. He brings the credibility. I thought he was fantastic in this movie. I thought he was really solid. Uh, the action sequences are unlike any type of action sequence. This micro photography that they did in the movie, so well done and executed so right. And there's a lot of cheesy things you could have done with that, like, hey, a man's going to sneak into the girl's change room. They, they, <laughs> they never did anything cheesy with it, right? And I never would have thought that I could get emotionally invested and attached to an insect in a movie. And yet, right? <laughs> Antony. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these insects become like the dogs in Independence Day, when you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen with these insects? And then the other human beings that are in the film, too, never took away from the story. They only added. Everybody did their part so well. Corey Stoll was fantastic as this villain, this ominous presence is lurking in the background that is a rival to the technology of the Ant-Man suit. Evangeline Lilly coming in as the, the character of Michael Douglas's daughter and the way that she was playing both sides I thought was fantastic. Michael Pena and T.I. Oh, my. They, th you talk about things that could have gone wrong or could have gotten too jokey and transformers -y and just get me away from these humans. Those guys added such an addition of humor to the movie. I, I, I be totally honest with you. I sat down with Michael Pena and I said, the first thing I said, I'm going to be honest with you, man. First five minutes you were in the movie, I was totally annoyed by your character. I thought, oh my God, please don't, please don't have this character on screen much. By the end of that film, I couldn't get enough of him. Mm -hmm. I like honestly, Michael Pena, the scenes he's in, he steals the scenes. Like, and once your brain kind of adjusts to who this character is, you will love him. Every I think a lot of people are gonna be talking Michael Pena. Now, part of this is that our guy Ray, Michael Pena is in this movie, is Ray Aura. <laughs> Uh, it's which is like really really crazy. Ray hasn't seen the movie yet, so he doesn't really know what we're talking about. It's when we totally you, dude. But yeah, he like and the supporting characters, uh, whether it's um, David, I never know how to pronounce David's last name, or Ti, mm -hmm. the other guys in the heist crew, really good. And they're not just at first you think they're going to be this stereotypical bumbling guy, but without going to spoilers, there are moments of heroism with with all of the crew, right? Where you, you just get this appreciation for the characters as a whole. And I thought that was real. Corey Stoll is becoming one of my favorite character actors in the business. When you look at stuff that he does, whether it's like the role he had in House of Cards, which is what he's probably most, uh, best known for, this little show he's in right now called The Strain, which is not a great show, but he's really good in it. You can see him play a strong hero, a weak hero, a frail villain, a, a, a well-meaning bad guy. A this, And then you see him in a role like this. The guy just crushes it, knocks it out of the park. Paul Rudd was the right guy to cast in this movie. Absolutely, yeah. I think that always people are going to have some concern whether it was like Michael Keaton as Batman all the way back that, to that far, or you have Paul Rudd, who's primarily known for comedy, playing a superhero, the perfect guy to cast in here. When you see Ant-Man, you're also going to be thinking, how is this going to tie in to the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe? And I thought the film handled those tie-ins so well without so hitting you over the head with like, hey, look, no, this guy, this guy's in the same world as these guys. It was so clever the way that they peppered in the fact that, Yes, we are indeed in the place where the Avengers are too. You know what? This part really, this part really excited me, and it may not excite you guys as much. One of my biggest pet peeves of stereotypes in movies is this: when you have the hero, and the hero either has an ex-girlfriend or a love interest who's with another guy, <laughs> that guy is always a 100% pure dick. <laughs> It's 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 inevitable. It's always that that the boy, the new boyfriend, or whatever, is always pure dick. Bobby Cannavale. I always mispronounce. Is my yeah. his name right? Yeah. Bobby Cannavale's character in this movie. You at first you think pure dick, but you, you it's, this isn't a spoiler because you very quickly find out he's multidimensional. Look at that. There's more to him than he's just the ex's new boyfriend who's a total dick. That's I mean, right. And I really like that. In real life, the guys always are dicks, but in <laughs> in this movie, and he does lend something too the fact that he's, he's a little bit along on some of these adventures that Ant-Man goes on as well like you said at its heart this movie is a smaller film than what you get with something like the Avengers even though no the pun stakes, intended <laughs> damn it I should have known I was doing that I would have been a lot better at this but I mean I, I just I had so, so much fun watching this movie and it's rare that you walk into a huge comic book film and you and you're so not knowing what to expect you know you can be taken by surprise the fact that Ant-Man was able to do that and do it so well. I was so happy with. It. I just I go to the movies to have fun, and yeah. this movie was a ball from start to finish. Okay, so let's let's change direction here a little bit. What do you think are some of the things that Ant Man did that maybe could have been done better? 
Um, not much. I, I think that Ant Man. Uh, it's. Eh, I I I really don't have a complaint about this movie. I think that sometimes towards the end, it the action might have gotten drawn out a little bit. Some things were a little convenient, but that's going to happen in comic book movies. I mean, th there isn't one glaring thing that I'm walking out and I'm like, well, I didn't like that part. Everything from getting to meet and the backstory of Paul Rudd and his heist crew to him training and learning how to use this suit to the event that we have to overcome and the villain, the bad guy. I just thought it all melded together so well. There isn't something that I can point to and be like, we need to fix that. The one thing for me that stands out, and this is a common thread in a lot of Marvel movies, I find that the villain kind of became an afterthought. You know, when you look at a lot of the Marvel standalone films, Loki maybe being the exception, a lot of times the villain is just kind of a story device who is there. I'm a villain and I'm going to do something bad. And then they just disappear. And then it's just all about the heroes and what they're doing. Uh, you know, and then the, the villain becomes an afterthought. I found that a little bit here. Despite the fact that Corey Stoll plays the role fantastic. Mm -hmm. And when he's on it, you don't know what to make of him, but he's got this incredibly capturing screen presence about him too. He seems very imposing and powerful, you know? But overall, Yellow Jacket is a little bit of an afterthought in the movie until you get to the, you know, ultimately the big, the big end battle sequence. So that was a little bit of a down thing for me. I think some people, look, for me, the movie moved at a great pace, but I've seen the movie now a few times with a couple of people who thought there were moments that it felt a little dragged out, maybe could have been tightened up a little and bit. And I think that's a lot of people just being a little tired of origin stories, that we are yeah. inundated in this current climate of all these superhero movies coming out that you got to know about this guy's backstory. But Again, the fact that it was so funny on that ride, I think, really made the time go by pretty quick. Yeah, I think this movie is charming. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's funny. And I, I got, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, too, maybe the best, not, neither of them are the best end credit scene Marvel's ever done, but I think the best one-two punch of end credit scenes I've seen in Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, and that's saying a lot because I love the one-two punch of Captain America Winter Soldier. But the, then remember, folks, there are two Two end credit scenes and they're both in important. Man, and they're both important. Stay to the very, very end of the credits. I thought they were done so well. I had huge smile on my face for both of them. And they're very different kinds of end credit scenes. So what, make sure you stay for those. So, Mark, judgment time, I'm going to throw it over to you. Out of 10, what do you give... Ant-Man. Whew, 10's a high number, and almost as high of a number is 9. I'm going 9 out of 10 for Ant-Man. It didn't just, watching the movie, it didn't, didn't quite feel like a perfect 10 out of 10, but you are going to have so much fun watching Ant-Man. It's one of those movies that you might want to go see two or three times in the theater. It's just so exciting. You might miss something the first time because you were laughing. I, I loved watching this picture. I also loved this movie. I enjoyed it so much. It instantly jumped into my top three standalone Marvel cinematic films up there with Captain America Winter Soldier, with the original Thor. I, I actually enjoyed it more than the first Iron Man. Uh, and wow. it, like I really and I think I might have enjoyed it more than the original Thor too. And everybody, if you know me, I love the original Thor. Honestly, I think maybe Captain America and the Winter Soldier might be the only Marvel standalone film I might have liked a little bit more. I love this movie for me. I'm going to give it an 8.5. Loved. It. I'm actually going to go see it again tonight for the <laughs> third time. I, that's how much I really enjoy this movie. All right, folks, that'll do it for us for this review of Ant-Man. The important thing here, though, is if you've seen the movie, there have been some advanced screenings, jump in the comments section and let us know what you think of it. Or even if you haven't seen it yet, jump in and let us know what are the things you're excited about the movie and what are the things that give you a little bit of apprehension We'd love to hear your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. So you'll see the button. Click subscribe to Collider Video. And make sure you watch our daily movie news show, Collider Movie Talk, every single day, Monday through Friday. So, Mark Ellis, where can people find you? Uh, I always like to tweet and Instagram my immediate reaction to a movie. So you can go on either one of those things. Follow me at 5150 Ellis. And it's just my emoji reaction. The one for Ant-Man was pretty cool. I'm not the best looking person in it, <laughs> but it was pretty fun. And uh, you can follow, follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, all those other places, just at John Campia. So for myself and Mark and everybody else in the room, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.